Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up. Matt McCarthy at Studio 34, the Fantasy Sports Network in the Renaissance Hotel on West 35th Street. And I am here with Mr. Michael Crafton, who was here earlier with us with Steve Lewis, who flew out of here, literally literally flew out of here. Uh, and my newly decided, if that's a term, favorite rugby player, Phaedra Knight. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Phaedra. Hello, Matt. I have to salute you first off because... You just retired officially from international play. Yes, I did. You did? Yes. So there's no shot we're going to see you in this World Cup? Absolutely not on the field. In the four, in a fourth World Cup, we're not going to see you. You'll see field. me at a, right. at a fourth World Cup, but oh, just where, not where on the field. We, will you be involved <laughs> in this World Cup, Phaedra? I certainly will. Doing what? Um, I will be an NBC analyst for, mm. yeah, for, the, for the World Cup. Um, I'll be working obviously for the uh, or during the three U.S. pool games, uh, two semifinal matches, and then the final. Excellent. One side of the ball to the other side of the ball, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, just virtually no transition time whatsoever. <laughs> just right at it. You're like the Alex Corbacero. Or I'm like the Phaedra Knight. Or like the Phaedra Knight. Sure. I like that. All right, and Phaedra Knight. Let's talk I like about. It. I like let's it. talk about Phaedra Knight a little bit here, Michael. Uh, Phaedra Knight, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you were just a little girl from Irwinton, Georgia. Just a little girl from Irwinton. Uh, Alabama State to the University of Wisconsin Law School. You are a lawyer. I am a lawyer. That's shocking to me. It's that you've accomplished all this. Um, what is your eagle number? I am eagle number 99. Oh, I didn't think you were going to get that. I didn't think you were going to get that. 33 caps as a 15s player, 7 caps as an 8, uh, 8 caps as a 7s player? Does Actually, 35 as an, as a 15s player, and I'm not quite sure if that number's right on the 7s, but Let's update possible. that on usarugby.org, guys <laughs> and girls, because uh, Ron Burgundy here reads what's in front of him. So that's 7s and 15s. 7s and 15s. All right. What do you want your opponents to say about you when they're on my show five to ten years from now and I ask them about Phaedra Knight? You know, I think you're going to get a, a mixed response. No, but what do you want them to what say? What do I want them to say? I just, I want them to be honest. I what mean, do you want them to remember about you? I want them to remember that I hit them the hardest, but I was the one to help them up when I hit them. I don't <laughs> recall you always helping players up after you. Not always, but probably three quarters of the time. If, if the... If there was was a whistle. Or or if it was just convenient, right? You hit someone, you help them up, especially if it's not going to affect play. So why not, right? (laughs) You're clearly a better person than I am. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah, no, that was not... That wasn't what we would do. We would try to step on a finger or something Uh. as you're getting up and running away. Um, It's probably why I have a lot of scars on my face. (laughs) But the Rugby World Cup is going on right now. And for the folks at home that thought, wait a minute, the Rugby World Cup was in 2014, and isn't this supposed to be every four years? Yeah, the, the cycle obviously changed in an effort for to uh, well, World War Rugby had in mind to allow countries to have two years preparation between the Men's World Cup and the Women's. And they did this back in 1994, too, where they changed the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, primarily because they didn't want it to compete with the men's world cup as it did in 91. Right. And so this change came about immediately following the 2014 world cup. And so I think you're going to find countries can probably better resource. Um, and it just allows for kind of a two year even flow. Right. How did the women react to that? Were they okay with that with the USA team? Um, matter. I didn't hear any uh, open backlash. Uh, about it I, I don't think anyone really thought too much of it um, I know that Pete Steinberg has commented um, that you know it's an abbreviated obviously an abbreviated development cycle did it but, allow for more money into camps because uh, as far as the US is concerned well you know because it wasn't four years it was three so no, at least maybe there was, there was no more money I mean if you take a look at the budget I think yeah. <laughs> it's his fault Mike, Mike, well I don't think it's his fault he doesn't make budgetary decisions, right? But uh, it certainly didn't result in more money. Uh, in fact, it, it, it was probably less money. Okay. 
Before I segue into the Congress and the 87 women at the first World Cup, we have some fellow New York Rugby Club members that are in this on this World Cup. We team. absolutely do. We have Tiffany Fahey, who will be captaining the squad, and Alicia Washington. Uh, Tiff is a prop. Alicia will be playing lock. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you're in the New York Rugby Club corner right behind you. Always, yeah, always, always in the New York Rugby Club always. corner. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the 87 team being at the send-off for the current squad and how that might have been somewhat bittersweet for you. We'll be right back. From around the globe, legends are arriving at Rugby Town USA. 20 teams, including the Olympic gold medal rugby champions, Fiji. Rugby Town 7s, August 25th through the 27th at Infinity Park in Glendale, Colorado. Tickets at RugbyTown7s.com. If you're just joining us, this is a big match and a big moment as Kleister's toes the line. You know, John, Anderson has really been struggling out there today. mistake as Kleister's clinches another title. Don't let your nutrition get in the way. USANA, the official multivitamin of the WTA. Hey everybody, Matt McCarthy. We're back at Studio 34 Fantasy Sports Network for Rugby Wrap-Up in the Renaissance Hotel. Uh, Phaedra Knight, Michael Crafton, the send-off for this year's team to Ireland, to Dublin, uh, included the um, 87 women who weren't officially even called eagles at that point yeah it was it was an amazing time um an amazing group of women who despite uh, the efforts at that time or lack thereof of usa rugby and naysayers you know they played they succeeded and they still stand strong and they were there um in solidarity um, in solidarity with Congress, with the board, and with you know Dan Payne um, as the as the obviously the the main rep for USA Rugby, and so uh, it was a wonderful send off. It was a very powerful moment um, to have those ladies w- walk into the room um, and just to feel the emotion that Kathy Flores uh, put forth in her speech in her delivery to the group just talking about um, the, 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 the specifics and details of that night in uh, Canada. So are they now eagles? They are. They As they were then. All right. So now hold on a second. <laughs> if they're eagles, do we have to 86 to 99 on your number eagle? Or are they included in that? I don't know if they're included, but I believe they were. I believe they, they've been included in that number. I don't right. think they were. We're going to have some rugby historians and Get Smart fans research that. Michael, that send-off was one of the positives, right? Yeah, absolutely, and it was, without a doubt, the most emotional part of the, uh, part of the day. Did you cry? Uh, a little bit. Six <laughs> women were given their first caps, long overdue. I would have cried. Uh, just for the record, I cried I, inside. I, cried. <laughs> I <laughs> cried inside. Yeah, I did. It was it was awesome. Yeah. So, uh, full disclosure: How long have you known that you were retiring before? Um, I knew last time I was on the show. Um, you I've, dirty I've, name! I've, you I've didn't n- tell us. <laughs> you. Well, you know, you never know, right? It, I knew I had. I was probably eighty percent sure um, back in when I actually went to selection camp um, because at that point. I had, you know, entered discussions with NBC. I had some, I had a clue back then. And so I how knew. much is it going to bug you to be watching this? Or how much is it, how much are you going to be like? I mean, I, I guess you, I won't know until the actual moment, but in this, at, yeah. you know, everything I've felt, even being in D.C. with the team, um, at the embassy and at the send-off party, uh, zero. I, I'm 110% happy uh, with my career, um, I know that maybe it, start making some money. Uh, you, yeah. you know that maybe start that's making a, some money. For that'd a be change. a great thing. But you know, I know that my impact on the field was was felt, and I have a greater uh, role to play um, now off the field. All right, all right. So speaking about off the field, you are a board member for USA Rugby. I am. You are, and you were at this meeting. So let's now get down to the nitty gritty. As a board member, as an athlete, were you satisfied with how things went? I was, 
I was relatively happy with the way a lot of things went. I think that for me, I would like to see faster movement. I, you know, in the, you know, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not necessarily going to divulge the things that were discussed in the boardroom. Um, and it was my first um, board member or board meeting actually being present physically at. Um, but there's a tremendous amount going on. There's a tremendous amount of forward moving energy um, in that boardroom. And I think that was also in the, in the Congress meeting as well. Um, w what I will say is I think things need to move faster. Um, and I think that there are many points that need to continue to be hammered upon, especially, and again, I, I hate to be the one to do it, but I love to be the one to do it, um, things concerning the women's game. The, there's got to be, number one, more... Well, you're, there's nobody more qualified to do it than you. Of course, but there needs to be more voices at the table. There needs to be more um, women or people advocating for the women's cause, at, in that, even in that boardroom. In the boardroom, in Congress... You know, it does not. It needs to. It needs to exemplify the body of people that we represent, and it currently doesn't. It just simply doesn't. And and so, if if the voices that are there and the people that are there are not going to echo um, those things, then we need to get other people in that will. Um, and I'm not pushing or <laughs> by any means pushing that anyone needs to be pushed out. What I'm what I'm simply saying is that. Um, you know, there are a lot of seemingly disgruntled people out there in USA Rugby. So my encouragement to you is to step up, put your name in the in the hat to be a Congress member, put your name in the hat then to be a board member, and, and get ready to roll up your sleeves and do the work. Um, but in terms of, of, of the people that are there, I think we need to, to be a little bit more dedicated and focused and open. And I felt like in the boardroom especially, and in, in the Congress meeting, there was a lot more openness than I had maybe previously perceived. Um, and I think- That's good. Yeah. And so with that, you can do a lot. Yeah. And so I'm just taking advantage of that opening to do as much as I can to make my voice be heard and to do the work that I can do that can push the game forward, both men's and women. All right, Michael, as the Empire GU man in the, or one of them, um, What's your takeaway? What's the Empire GU perspective on? So, you know, I think Empire, since its creation, has kind of been at the forefront of advancing various different things. Um, and we're going to continue to do that. Uh, one of the big things we're doing locally is we're going to invest more in our members. Um, that means 15s advancement with opportunities for all stars, both men and women's. Um, we're starting to concentrate with a focus in New Jersey and the metro area, as well as upstate New York. So our athletes up there get looks as well. Uh, coaching development is going to be coming down the uh, down the pipe here soon. That's something that that coaching development is something that a lot of people have been barking about. Yeah, and 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 you know the national office for a variety of reasons just hasn't been able to deliver on that yet. Um, but you know everyone pays um, local dues as well, so it, it should be a part of our burden. Not that's a commendable response, of. Michael. Well, it, it's it's what we need to do because we need to make all of our teams better, um, with the purpose of not only community rugby, but we need to figure out how do we pull out those men and women who are playing for New York Rugby Club, uh, or playing for Bayonne, playing playing for Morris, playing for Buffalo, and get them seen by um, you know selectors, you yeah. know, with MLR it's a big problem. maybe it's a big coming country. on. Yeah, and it's a huge state. That, that's right, and and with a professional rugby organization of some sort um, coming on, online, uh, whether that's pro MLR or something else, uh, there's going to need to be a pathway for local clubs to get their athletes, their best athletes, into those teams. Um, so they need to be seen. All right, with that, we are basically out of time in this segment. With that, I want to thank Phaedra Knight. Thank you. Michael Crafton and the dashing Steve Lewis for being here earlier. Thank you for replacing him. It was getting... Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, thanks to everybody. Matt McCarthy at Rockin' Riley's at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in the Renaissance Hotel on West 35th Street in New York City for Rugby Wrap-Up, signing off. <laughs>